This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. T. Before we proceed to the video, how about hitting the bell icon to get notified every single time we upload a new video. And hey, you can also check out our playlist on our channel for more awesome videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Got it. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to study about management of open bite and to be specific in this video we are going to study about the management of anterior open bite. So the first question is what is an open bite? So as is very obvious from this word only we have a bite that is open. Like if this is our maxillary arch and this is our mandible arch and obviously let me try to show you uh, teeth here. So let us suppose I'm just drawing a line. Save time. This is our upper teeth, and this is our lower teeth. Okay. So when usually they bite, they don't have any space between them. So that is normal. But when you have a space, when you have the bite that is not close, that is open, that is the open bite. So it could be of two types. If the bite is open anteriorly. That will be called as anterior open bite, anterior open bite and if it is open posteriorly then it will be known as posterior open bite, posterior open bite. This was a very basic idea about what is anterior open bite and what is posterior open bite. Now another term for open bite is apertogenathia. So apertogenathia and open bite basically they mean the same thing. Now how do you classify open bite? So we have already classified based on the area which is open. We have the anterior open bite and we have the posterior open bite. Also this could be the open bite could be because of two reasons. Either it could be the teeth that are at floor or it could be the bones that could be the reason. So we have one more classification. We have skeletal open bite and we have dental open bite. Now let us see some of the etiological factors of anterior open bite. Why does it happen? So basically this could be inherited or it could be due to some habits. Okay, so inherited conditions like abnormal skeletal growth pattern. So when your skeletal growth is not proper. So if I have to show this to you there could be short mandibular ramus. This is the ramus and this is the body. So we could have a short mandibular ramus or we can also have an increased gonial angle. So the gonial angle is angle between the mandibular plane and the ramal plane. Also inherited could be tongue. That means the tongue could be abnormally large. We have two things to keep in mind in inherited. We have short mandibular ramus or increased gonal angle and also we have abnormally large tongue size. Then coming on to habits, we have habits such as mouth breathing, tongue thrusting, digit sucking or thumb sucking. Now that we have learned that the open bite could be due to two reasons, skeletal or dental we will see the features of each one of them separately. Okay, For example, if a person or if a child or say adolescent comes to your clinic and, and let's say he has dental open bite, what features will you see? And if he has skeletal open bite, skeletal, we are talking about the anterior open bite. So what features we will see in each of these cases? So in the dental, you will have an anterior open bite that is usually asymmetrical. I hope the spelling is right. It's not right. <laughs> there will be proclined maxillary and or mandibular incisors. Wrong pen choice. So you could have, you could have proclined maxillary and or mandibular incisor. Then obviously you can see spacing between the anterior teeth, upper and the lower anterior teeth. Then there could be possibility that your maxillary arch is narrow. Maxillary arch narrow 
and the child or the person could have a fish mouth appearance okay so these were the features of dental anterior open bite we had asymmetrical open bite usually or often and then we had procline maxillary and or mandibular incisor then we had a maxillary arch that was narrow it was a possibility then there was a possibility of maxillary arch being narrow and then fish mouth appearance so when you look at the person's teeth you will feel that actually it is a fish <laughs> okay no offense then um, we have the skeletal anterior open bite and let us see the features so in this case we will have a long face and why will we have a long face because of increased lower anterior facial height and why is that happening so let us suppose this is our mandible and this is our maxilla so skeletal anterior open bite it could be because of either this maxilla can rotate upward or the mandible can rotate downward or due to combination like this was happening together with this right then another reason could be that we have vertical maxillary axis so the size is increasing vertical size and also due to increased in the angle here so these were the reasons of skeletal anterior open bite and because of this we have a long face in such people then obviously the second feature would be incompetent lips now cephalometric analysis will reveal two very important thing and that will be increase in the mandibular plane angle so mandibular plane angle will increase and also the gonial angle will increase let me draw okay so let us suppose this is the face and here we have this orbit then we have the external auditory meatus okay then here we have the mandible now here we have this point here in red or say pink this is the orbital and here we have the external auditory meatus so the frankfurt horizontal plane it is drawn from the point orbital to the supermost point on the external auditory meatus and this would be the porion so we have this line right here and that is the frankfurt horizontal plane here we have the gonial angle and here we have the lowest point of the symphysis so this line that will join these two so this will be the mandibular plane now mandibular plane angle is when these two line will meet somewhere and they will make an angle that will be the mandibular plane angle so mandibular plane angle is established when you take these two lines the frankfurt horizontal plane and the mandibular plane and you get an angle so in cases of skeletal anterior open bite this angle will increase and obviously the second thing the gonial angle will increase in this case right coming back to our original canvas here more points need to be added we will have a possibility of short mandible because obviously this is a culprit here so these were the extra oral features we would be seeing in skeletal anterior open bite now coming on to the intra oral features we have mild crowding and also there will be upright incisor all right and you will see discrepancies in the occlusal plane okay like the maxillary occlusal and the palatal plane will be tilting upward and that of the mandible occlusal plane will be towards you no know, it will be downwards now the question is how do you correct anterior open bite so first of all we need to treat the etiology for example if there is some kind of habit then habit breaking appliances must be used so let us consider here two scenarios in both of them we have anterior open bite 
A O B. So this is my abbreviation just to save time. So we have anterior open bite, but in first scenario we also have increase in facial proportion, proportion, and in the second one we have a habit. Okay, like digit sucking, tongue thrusting, mouth breathing, etc. So in this case, if we have increased facial proportion, that means that means we have some skeletal problem. So what we will have, we will have two choices. If the child is is in the growing phase, then we will go for myofunctional therapy. And if the child has already, you know, been past the growth phase, what we are going to do? We are going to surgically correct that. So we are going for orthognathic surgery okay surgery generally involves leafort 1 osteotomy because we have to get the maxilla posteriorly and here in my functional we can use a chin cup with vertical head cap now if the child has some habit along with antelope and bite the first step would be that we will stop the habit interception stop it using appliances or psychological therapy so you can either give fixed appliances or removable habit breaking appliances and usually when you stop the habit these cases will resolve on its own but if the anterior open bite does not get resolved on its own then what you need to do you need to go for fixed orthodontic treatment okay along with this so usually box elastics of medium to heavy forces may be applied for correction of mild to moderate open bite. So this was all about the treatment of anterior open bite. I hope you found the video helpful. If yes, do let me know in the comment section below. Till we meet next time. Take care. Allah Hafiz.